Hey, what's up? So today I'm going to be doing some multi-user editing tutorial. Here you are. I'm going to be using Unreal Engine documentation. And uh, I'm going to be going through this step by step. Um, I am using Perforce as my source control. It, I think it recommends it later down this thing somewhere. So um, I already did tutorials on those videos. If you want to go watch those to see how to set up Perforce for your computer and other people's computers so that you can all work together in a session and be able to store it in a local file. It's not necessary to actually use the multi-user editing, but it helps when trying to save projects. All right, so let's go over here. And what we want to do is we want to enable the plugin first. So go into Edit, Plugins. And if you look up Multi in this plugin thing, we're going to want to check this box right here. So let's check that. And then it'll give you this message warning thing. And then you just put Yes to enable the plugin. And then you can hit Restart Now because it doesn't take it it doesn't take it into effect until you actually restart so let it restart and now it's restarted so there's a few things so each computer that's connecting to the multi-user editing has to have the exact same version of Unreal Engine installed and each computer needs also to have the same copy of the Unreal Engine project with exactly the same content and that's where the whole having a source control like Perforce or GitHub would be beneficial because you're able to sync all the information um, to every computer with the same revisions. Now, if you aren't going to use source control, I would recommend that you do because it makes things a lot easier. You could always simply just copy your project folder from one computer to all the other computers that you want to have join the same session but I would recommend you not do this for the long term at least because that would be a hassle and it's really hard to do and it's way safer to just use a version control now opened up the project on the other computer I have here and I also enabled the multi-user editing stuff and whatnot so now that I have a copy of the project on both the computers, I'm going to want to customize a few settings on each computer. The first thing is I'm going to go into the edit here and I'm going to go under project settings here and on the right here you should be able to find a thing under plugins which says multi-user editing. You want to click on that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get the enable multi-user toolbar button and what that's going to do it's it's going to add a new button to the toolbar in the unreal editor window that provides shortcuts to the multi-user editing commands you'll see that you'll that you're going to need most often and then display name i'm just going to Carbonic, <laughs> and then your avatar color. This is going to be the avatar that's going to show up for the other person that's going to be in your thing. And once you do that, you're going to want to restart your computer again. And it even tells you at the bottom here, restart required to apply new settings. So I'm going to restart now. And now you're going to see this pop up here. So that at least shows you that the settings worked. If this doesn't pop up in this corner up here, then your project settings probably didn't save. So now what we want to do is we want to start a server. And we're going to start that by clicking on this up here to open a session. All right, so we're in here. Uh, we're just going to click the launch a server button here. And it'll pull this up. 
with your previous sessions and whatnot, you have to leave this thing open because when I delete it, it goes into that spiraling thing again. So let me create a new session and I'm just gonna call it something. I'm just gonna hit the check mark for this. And I have now created a server. Yeah, so you remember how I said that thing about needing to make sure both versions are at the are the same version? Well, I didn't do that. So uh, I had to update both my versions on my computers so that they are now matching. And I am on the other computer, by the way. So here I've already set up the multi-user editing plugin and all that other stuff. So all I need to do to join the session now is to click on this open session browser. Uh, because I have the same version, this pops up. So if you don't see this up here, you might have the wrong version. And let me just double click on this. And now I have joined the session. So I am back on my admin computer. And as soon as they connect, you're gonna be able to see their icon here at the bottom here, it says the other person. And if any of the computers already working on the session have already made any changes to the level or the assets in the project before you joined, your instance of Unreal Editor will automatically fetch those transactions from the server and apply the changes in your local view of the shared session workplace. So you'll be now locked into working with the same account as all the other participants. So now we can see the Keyfuse computer over here, and that's actually them in their real space. So if, uh, if I go over to this cube and well, actually, I'm going to lift it with uh, their computer and I'll show you what it looks like on this computer. So I am back over here. I'm going to look at my guy and I'm going to lift this on my side. And as you can see from the, the video there, it just kind of like jumped up and you could see it move in time there. All right, so things got changed around. You guys are just editing the project. You guys are all changing things. None of that is actually reflected in the actual files yet. So what we need to do is we need to persist persist the session changes. So if you go down here where this revision control is and you click on the revision control, it'll pop up a, a list of things. You're gonna click the persist session changes. All right, so now that you have the persistent submit files thing open, you're going to see a list of things that you've done within the project. And you have the option of clicking the submit to revision control. If you have it connected to revision control. So I'm going to click on the submit to revision control and it'll pop up a change list description. If I don't have this uh, checked, by the way, it will lock out the files if you consistently want to make more changes to it. But right now I'm just going to send in the revision and I'm going to type made change <laughs> the kind of the same way that you do normally when you submit your change list descriptions. So I have the option to keep the files checked out, which will keep them locked or it will lock them out so that if you're planning on to keep making changes on whatever you're changing, you might wanna check that, but otherwise I'm just gonna hit submit. And it says persist, I didn't get to read it. I got a check mark, so it, it worked. Okay, so it's the end of the day. We finished all the changes we need to do. What do we do now? So what we're gonna do now is we're actually just going to end and delete the session 
you could leave the session open and then rejoin it later but it's best practice to just delete the delete the session and start over when you go back into it so let me pull up the thing and we have this open here and we just have to hit the button over here which says leave the current session I'm gonna click it uh, you're about to leave a session containing changes do you want to persist the changes yes if you haven't persisted changes already I'm going to submit to revision control changed stuff submit successfully done and I have left the session now on the active session, I can just click on it and I can hit this little delete button here. Do you want the session? The session something will be deleted from the server PC. I'm gonna say yes. And it will kick whoever else is in it out of it. If somebody's in it, I forgot to have them say the changes, but since I have it on source control, they will already have the revision within the source control. They just have to update. All right, so, I mean, that's it. That's how you multi-user edit. Hope this was helpful. Have a good one. Bye.